good morning today's uh, topic uh, topic of discussion is uh, polytrauma yeah good morning today's discussion is uh, about polytrauma and its management so the definition will be like this polytrauma is an injury to two or more organ systems leading to a life threatening condition injury to two or more organ systems leading to a life threatening condition is polytrauma it's a number one cause of death among younger younger age group that is between 18 to 45 or 44 years of old uh, age it's the third most common cause of death in all age group so always remember it is injury to two or more organ systems leading to a life threatening condition yes there is a difference between polytrauma and multiple fractures Poly- polytrauma is not synonymous with the multiple fractures multiple fractures are purely orthopedic problem and in and it involves skeletal system only but in polytrauma there is involvement of uh, may, uh, uh, various systems like uh, central nervous system respiratory system cardiovascular system abdominal so while in power trauma there is involvement of more than one system like associated head injury chest injury spinal injury abdominal injury or pelvic injury multiple fractures are uh, it is purely related to orthopedic problem there is no involvement of any other organ system as such so that's the difference between uh, power trauma and multiple fractures so to always differentiate with, between these so when you come to the distribution of death most of the death occur within 1 hour of polytrauma almost 50% so some cause of immediate death or severe head injury or braced in injury or high cord injury high cord injury means the spinal cord injury to the spinal cord spreading up to the medulla oblongata heart and major vessel injury or massive blood loss these are all the cause for immediate death that is within 1 hour and most of the death will occur within 1 hour that is almost 50% and some cause of early death uh, that is within 1 uh, to 3 hours or intracranial bleed chest injury abdominal bleeding pelvic bleeding and multiple limb injury these are all the cause for early death early death means death within 1 to 2 hours and it occurs in almost uh, 30% of the population uh, who suffer polytrauma and late death so it is mainly due to uh, sepsis either sepsis or organ failure that's not immediate cause that occurs due to infection or multi organ failure or injury to the uh, Uh, multiple organ uh, multiple organs that leads to multi organ failure like uh, kidneys other res- uh, respiratory distress syndromes so these are all the cause for late death and uh, it's a least percentage i mean to say some 20% people succumb to death due to sepsis or organ failure if they survive the first two causes so obviously you can see the golden hour of trauma is within one hour um, of the trauma okay 80% of the death occur within uh, one hour for within first hour of injury so that would be your golden hour for the trauma so instead of wasting time 
uh, nowadays people are uh, making videos at the accident sites or uh, some people are bringing water and make them to drink instead of doing all those you have to shift the patient as early as possible as immediately as possible okay so that will save the time that will give the time for the intervention by the paramedics or the medic that's the importance of golden hour as you can see the first 50 percent of them succumb within zero to one hour so this is about the time order distribution of the de uh, death in uh, polydrum patients now we'll see the pathology what will be the pathology in uh, polytrauma patients as you can think uh, injury to the multiple organs like uh, the uh, important organs like the brain or the cvs or the circulatory system these are all the uh, important organs so these are all the uh, important reasons for the death okay so uh, the main pathology is primary insult to the brain because the respiratory centers are located in the brain and uh, uh, another cause of uh, injury, uh, uh, another cause of death is due to circulatory failure to direct injury to the heart, either circulation or the breathing or the head injury. These are all the three uh, main causes of death in uh, polytrauma patients. So primary insult is due to trauma or injury or success and secondary insult suppose the patient has uh, survived the primary uh, injury if you do if you do any surgery during the uh, immediate hours of the polytrauma that you are going to insult again that is the secondary insult see the surgery is always a trauma to the patient alongside uh, primary trauma you are uh, giving the secondary trauma like the surgery that may uh, inside the stim uh, immune system and uh, he may succumb to death. So uh, surgery is always unavoided uh, in uh, polytrauma patients immediately unless it's a dire emergency or some sort of uh, emergency surgery known as uh, damage control surgery. And you should avoid all other type of surgeries during polytrauma. So the primary insult is due to trauma, injury, injury or fractures and secondary insult may be as a result of related circumstances like sepsis or surgical procedures. Okay, So this will cause the hyperstimulation of the inflammatory system by either single or multiple hits. Single hit is due to primary trauma or multiple hit due to secondary insult due to surgery or sepsis. Try to understand. And is considered by many to be a key element in the pathogenesis of ARDS or multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. So how to predict this one? Recently, uh, the, we have markers like interleukin-6 and HLA-DR class 2 molecules. These are all, these two are the prognostic markers uh, to, uh, to predict the outcome of the patient who has got polytrauma. Okay, always remember interleukin-6 and HLA-DR HLA -DR class 2 molecules are the prognostic markers in a patient with a sepsis or polytrauma. This can predict the outcome. If the value is more, uh, you can say that the damage is more and the value is uh, less and it is uh, decreasing day by day, you can say the patient is recovering. That's the way to look. So here in this you can remember the primary hit, primary insult and the secondary insult. Primary insult is due to the trauma and uh, secondary insult is due to the perfusion injury or sepsis or the surgery. That will lead to uh, stimulation of uh, immune system uh, leading to hyperinflammation. Uh, that will lead to uh, acute uh, respiratory disease syndrome or uh, mitral valve failure. Okay. So as I said earlier, the golden hour, the chances of survival increases if severely injured patient has emergency management within one hour of energy.
uh, one hour of injury sorry within one hour of injury so uh, within that golden hour we have platinum 10 minutes only 10 minutes in the golden hour may be used for all thing activities like shifting the patient or calling an ambulance and you should not as a medico uh, waste time on the on scene activity if you are traveling on a road and you see a follow uh, you see a trauma scene you should immediately call ambulance and you should uh, stabilize the airway or you should prevent people doing uh, some unusual activities like uh, make the patient to drink water or uh, uh, making him sit or something like that okay so this is about the golden hour as you see the golden hour is within one hour of the injury okay so if you are in an emergency i mean the casualty department and suddenly some 50 to 60 patients come to emergency due to a bus accident okay so uh, you will not be able to handle all the patients at a time so you have to prioritize the patient you have to classify the patient who needs the immediate treatment or who needs the late treatment or who doesn't need any treatment so for that we have a system known as triage triage refers to the methods used to assess patients severity of injury or illness within a short time in an accident or in a mass casualty incident to sort out the patients into those who need critical attention and immediate transport to the hospital and those with less injury we need triage so our uh, triage is basically uh, sorting of patients who need uh, immediate treatment and who do not need uh, immediate treatment and we have uh, four categories in that category four is almost dead and survival survival not likely and category one is uh, critical and they cannot wait like uh, abdominal bleeding or a spleen hemorrhage or a brain injury and category two is urgent and can wait for such a minutes I mean the fracture, multiple fractures, or uh, something like that. And category three is less serious injury, like a laceration in the forearm or a laceration in the foot. They can wait for further. Okay. And as you see, the category four is uh, expected. I mean, survival uh, not likely. You may not uh, bother much about that. Okay. So these are all the steps how to triage. Uh, in a mass casualty uh, situation so if the patient can walk that means he is he doesn't need an immediate attention and that's the uh, dictum like that okay so if the patient can walk uh, there is no uh, immediate uh, uh, resuscitation program as such and if the patient comes in a stretcher and is not able to walk you need to check for breathing first always check for breathing or always check for airway airway and breathing are different are two different things always check for airway and then breathing okay if the patient is not breathing there might be an occlusion in the airway so clear the airway that is the second step if the patient is not breathing clear the airway if the breathing restored then progress to other uh, assessment areas if the breathing is not uh, restored you have to immediately secure the airway okay then after the airway is secured check the respiratory rate if the respiratory rate is less than 10 or more than 30 it is something related to uh, something related to the patient uh, respiratory problem okay and if uh, the respiratory rate is normal then you can proceed to recirculation okay so if the respiratory rate is less then you can supplement the breathing with oxygen okay and uh, 
the, the security uh, respiratory rate is more uh, then you need to check the why uh, the respiratory rate is more uh, either it is due to acidosis or some uh, brain trauma okay so these are all the uh, assessment that you can do just for trials this is not a treatment this is only for trials okay and check the circulation if the circulation uh, is all right i mean the capillary refill uh, time is uh, uh, more than two seconds it's a immediate uh, uh, you need to intervene immediately and if the capillary refill time is less than two seconds it's uh, almost urgent it's not uh, too immediate okay uh, this is how we trade uh, you know mass casualty situation advance uh, among uh, this one uh, there is one recent uh, update about this one is advanced formal life support system so this uh, it was uh, developed in united states of america by uh, orthopedic surgeon james steiner who got into uh, an air crash and his wife and his uh, three children got serious injury so he felt the need uh, uh, for a trauma life support system the protocol actually the protocol is used to be followed in every trauma patients so it has got four components like uh, the primary survey identify what is killing the patient if a patient with polytrauma comes to you you uh, 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 and the patient is having a fracture of femur and the chest injury you need to bother about the chest injury not the fracture of the femur all right so you need to identify what is killing this patient suppose a man uh, uh, was driving uh, I, I was driving a car with uh, uh, while eating a burger he succumbs uh, 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 he suffers an accident in a highway and is brought to the casualty and your medical officer there so he has got a burger in his mouth and is not able to breathe and he has got fracture uh, bilateral femur so uh, removing the burger in the mouth and securing the airway is of primary importance uh, rather than uh, giving attention to the attention to the femur fracture so first you have to identify what is killing the patient that becomes the primary survey and uh, the second component is resuscitation treat what is killing the patient remove the burger from the mouth of the patient and secure the airway this is the resuscitation in case of chest injury secure the airway and continue uh, oxygenation this is the uh, resuscitation part if there is circulatory problem take a wire bore needle and infuse with uh, ringer lactate solution this is the re resuscitation program not treating the uh, fracture first okay so secondary surveys in the incapacity to identify other injuries like fractures if he has got any laceration and any other injuries like cuts and wounds and burns so that comes under secondary survey this is done after the first two components are completed that is primary survey and resuscitation are completed then we can progress to secondary survey then the last one is definitive care develop a definitive management plan that you have encountered and encountered in a secondary survey like if there is laceration of the thigh you can suture it and if there is fracture of femur you can always kneel it okay so this comes under definitive care so it has got a four components primary survey always secure the airway uh, think about the breathing and circulatory problems identify them then resuscitate what is missing uh, that is treat what is killing the patient and after that you can go for secondary survey to identify other problems 
and uh, always you can go for definite cure of those uh, identified in secondary survey so as i said in primary survey always remember the airway uh, maintenance with control of cervical spine see any polytrauma patient is deemed to have a cervical spine injury unless it is ruled out always remember this any polytrauma patient is deemed to have cervical injury unless it is ruled out by an x-ray so always stabilize the neck if you see any accident on the road and you are traveling on the road always stabilize the neck first okay so we have got a log roll technique to turn the patient you need some two or three uh, to help you out uh, that we can see in the next slide so always airway maintenance with control of cervical spine is a priority that is the first thing to do secure airway first and then breathing and ventilation is the second step and third is circulation and hemorrhage control and uh, the for disability limitation e is exposure and avoidance if the patient uh, burns comes to you you need to remove all those uh, clothes uh, you mean to expose the body and you should also take care not to uh, cause the patient uh, hypothermia and or hypoemia okay so exposure and avoidance of the further uh, inciting agent like chemicals like acid or alkali you need to avoid uh, those chemical irritants then f is fracture stabilization so a b c d e f uh, this comes under primary service fracture stabilization means you need to put plaster or uh, temporarily immobilize the limb that's it nothing more than that so how to secure airway first you assess whether the airway is intact or not so uh, as the patient if you can if you can say his name if you can say his name then the airway is deemed to be patent okay if he is not able to if he is not able to say his name somewhere the airway is compromised so you need to assess the patency of airway if the patency is obstructed and in, if there is any foreign body in the mouth or the throat you need to remove those okay uh, yeah, I, i told about the patient with a burger in the mouth okay you need to remove the burger to secure the airway okay so um, rapid assess the airway obstruction and uh, thin lift or jaw thrust movement is needed here to clear the airway as you can see in the figure you lift the chin or give a thrust to the jaw of the mandible okay and that will secure the airway and you need to pass endotracheal oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway or uh, if it is not possible then you need to do surgical cricothyroidotomy just below the thyroid cartilage you need to open up the airway and you need to secure with the tube next is breathing after you secure the airway you need to think about the breathing whether the oxygenation is uh, 100% or not okay to determine the rate and depth of respiration you need to focus and auscultate the chest bilaterally if there is any uh, pneumothorax or uh, hemothorax in hemothorax uh, breath sounds are reduced on the side of injury okay administer high flow oxygen that is 15 liter 15 liters per minute ventilate with the bag mask valve uh, bag valve mask device that is ambu bag attach the limb attach the finger to pulse oximeter treat the tension pneumothorax usually uh, in emergency setups tension pneumothorax is usually treated by a large bore needle uh, inserted in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line uh, that was a novel treatment but nowadays uh, that is not recommended but in case of emergency you can always do that you should, you should insert wide bore needle 16 gauge or 14 gauge needle in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line will elevate tension in pneumothorax 
okay if there is open pneumothorax you can always use it at least it's okay so this is about the breathing you always uh, worry about the oxygenation always worry about the chest uh, 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 auscultation whether it is uh, bilaterally uh, patient or not okay fifth third is uh, circulation again this first you have to ask is what is the blood pressure of the patient if there is any external hemorrhage sources if there is externally uh, uh, if you are seeing the hem- any hemorrhage hemorrhagic source externally you have to close it immediately so the point is first assess what's the problem and act immediately upon that okay identify the source of external hemorrhage identify potential source of internal hemorrhage like the spleen or the liver or the abdominal aorta count the pulse its quality irritability and skin color blood pressure blood pressure is more important and the pulse rate is more important in uh, for a trauma patient usually blood pressure is uh, decreased low bp and uh, high pulse rate and this is the typical feature of a trauma patient okay so apply direct pressure to external bleeding site that is the management management part consider potential source of internal hemorrhage hemorrhage like spleen abdominal aorta liver and obtain surgical consult okay i can't treat a uh, splenic hemorrhage or liver hemorrhage or abdominal aorta uh, hemorrhage like just like that you need to have a specialized ot for that one so what you can do is insert two large bore catheters immediately whenever the patient comes to casualty insert two large bore catheter insert large bore needles so that if the patient goes to hypovolemia you may not get any veins to insert the needle so always insert two large bore catheters in case of polytrauma patients okay and then uh, draw blood for hematological and biochemical analysis like uh, uh, pregnancy acidosis icbc serum urea creatinine these are all the routine blood tests that you need to do uh so draw blood for that one blood typing and cross matching and the most important part initiate iv fluid therapy with the warm ringer's lactate solution not cold one patient is already in hypothermia or hypovolemia you should not insert cold fluids you should insert you should infuse them with warm ringer's la- ringer's lactate solution and don't let it if the blood loss is too much you need to replace with the blood and if the blood loss is uh, not too much we shall see when you should uh, do blood transfusion and when you should do renal lactate transfusion so uh, this is the classification of hemorrhage we have got class 1 2 3 and 4 depending on the blood loss if the blood loss is 750 less than 750 ml it is class 1 750 to 1500 ml is class 2 1500 to 2000 is class 3 and more than 2000 is class 4 okay so clinically you can't assess the blood loss you can't measure it like uh, you have you have got 750 ml blood loss and you have got 1500 ml uh, blood loss you can't do like that so we rely on the clinical parameters like blood pressure and the pulse if the pulse is more than 100 and the blood pressure is decreased you need you need to think that the patient is in danger he has got a, a sufficient hemorrhage sufficient blood loss to so that uh, you need to transfuse blood to him so typically if the blood uh, uh, if the pulse is more than 100 and uh, that uh, blood pressure is bp is normal you need to classify him as class 2 and uh, if the pulse is more than 120 and the bp is decreased you need to classify him as class 3 so you need to assume that 1500 to 2000, 2000 ml of blood loss is there and you need to treat the patient with the blood only as you can see in the last line the fluid the crystalloid is only for class 1 and class 2 not for class 3 for class 4 for class 3 and class 4 type of hemorrhage you need to transfuse blood 
are you getting it okay so uh, for class 3 and class 4 you need to transfer blood and uh, class 1 and class 2 you need to transfer crystalloid so after this one after the curing airway and breathing and circulation we need to check for disability disability you can uh, always assess with the cms first and that is abpo response if he is alert he need not worry much if he is uh, reacting with the verbal commands if he is uh, reacting only with pain stimulus if he is uh, if he is re- if he is unresponsive to any stimulus you need to worry about you need to go for assessment for the like uh, ct scan of the brain and what is causing the damage here okay so this is about the disability and expose full exposure of the patient for the assessment whether the, uh, the patient has got any other injuries like laceration or the bleeding here in the thigh or in the anal region that you may not see if the patient is covered up with cloth so you need to expose the patient and uh, at the same time you need to worry about the hypothermia also exposing the cl- uh, exposing the patient with a cloth may uh, may uh, cause hypothermia to the patient you need to worry about that one also so you need to prevent the hypothermia at the same time you need to expose the patient so this is about the primary survey okay in the primary survey we have got a b c d e f and uh, now we will go to secondary survey secondary survey begins after the primary survey after the abcde is are completed you need to go for secondary survey resuscitated to the first survey well established now and the patient is demonstrating and demonstrating normal evolution of vital signs so he has got normal vital signs normal pulse rate, uh, pulse rate normal bp so you will go for secondary survey so it uh, begins with a detailed history taking whether he has uh, what has happened what is the past history whether he has uh, similar complaints in the past okay and uh, detailed head to toe examination whether he has got any cuts in the back or the in in the anal region or any laceration or minor trauma or any metacarpal or spinal fracture any dislocation okay so imaging studies and reassessment of all the vital organs that you do in secondary survey so history taken whether he has got allergies any medications currently used whether it is diabetes whether he has diabetes or hypertensive any past illness whether she is pregnant or not and when was the last meal uh, that he, has, he or she has taken and any environment related to the injury or any events related to the injury head to toe examination neurological head maxillofacial cervical spine chest abdomen perineum rectum vagina and pulse cluster these are all the uh, systems included in the secondary survey and to say you need to examine from head to toe so assessing the musculoskeletal system you need to inspect palpate and uh, as a uh, like the exam like we examine in a normal uh, patient upper and like lower extremities for the evidence of blunt and penetrating injuries including contusion laceration deformity and palpate the upper and lower extremities for tenderness crepitations abnormal movements uh, just to check whether he has got any fracture or any contusion uh, due to trauma okay so always assess the pelvis the dictum here is uh, in a polytrauma patient this is always uh, rule out any pelvic injury from the orthopedic point of view so and uh, also inspect and palpate uh, thoracic lumbar spine for evidence of blunt and penetrating injuries including contusions lacerations uh, any palpable deformity or any vertebral fracture any spinal sposa fracture okay so always get x-ray of pelvis okay and uh, x-ray of uh, suspected fracture sites 
So main thing here is you should uh, assess the pelvis and you should get X-ray pelvis in a polyform patient. So among those uh, uh, concerning one is spinal injuries. Any patient suspected of spinal injury should be immobilized unless spine has been cleared or any polytrauma patient is deemed, is deemed to have a cervical injury and you should always immobilize the spine, especially the cervical spine. Using a cervical collar or spine board, you should immobilize the patient. And take an x-ray if the x-ray uh, comes normal and then you need not to report them. But always treat the patient uh, as if he is having a cervical injury. So this is the log roll technique I was telling you. At the uh, accident scene, we need to stabil see the one uh, person is stabilizing neck and another one is holding the upper limb and the upper torso and other, another one is holding the lower limb. So three of us in sync with the body, if they roll the patient, that is known as log roll technique. They are in sync. They move the patient at a time from supine to side or side to supine. Okay. So that is the log roll technique. So always rule out pelvis, uh, pelvis injury in polytrauma patient because uh, this accounts. Uh, um, so uh, for the uh, this accounts for the mortality of uh, 10 to 50 percent if it is not ruled out. Okay. So pelvis. Uh, uh, the vessels are more near the pelvic region and uh, if there is any injury to the vessels there may be hypovolemia and death so always rule out pelvic injuries always rule out urethral injuries and transfer uh, by inserting transfer uh, urethral catheter or suprapubic catheter okay so this accounts for 10 to 50 percent of the mortality If there is bleeding, of course, uh, you have to treat the bleeding first. Consider the hemodynamic status. If the rotary pole is tailored protocol, that is airway breathing circulation primarily. And, uh, and you have got fracture of pelvis. You need to stabilize the fracture of pelvis first. Okay. After securing airway breathing and circulation, of course, not primarily. Always check for airway breathing circulation and then go for fracture. Stabilization is by pelvic bander, external fixation, C clamp, pneumotic anti shock garment, or traction. So these are all the motor modalities for uh, pelvic fracture. Pelvic bander or external fixator, you can remember for examination point of view. Surgical treatment generally reserved for unstable injury by open reduction and fixation with treatment of fracture and bladder. This is it is always done in the secondary survey, uh, survey and uh, this type of surgery we call it as damage control surgeries. It is not a definitive surgery but yes to stabilize the patient during the uh, time of distress. So this is the external fixator for uh, pelvis. You insert two pins one in the uh, right ilium and one in the, uh, two pins in the left ilium and you, and you connect it with the rod. This is fixing the pelvis externally and of external fixator. So after primary and secondary survey we come to tertiary survey, repeat the physical exam physical examination, review any additional labs and radiographs uh, if any abnormality in the blood parameters. And uh, as you can see, 12 percent injuries in per trauma based in first 24 hours and standardized tertiary survey has shown to decrease missed injury by 36 percent. I mean to say some 36 more, 36 percent more of injuries can be detected in tertiary survey. So final thing is rehabilitation. After all this, you have to restore the patient to pre-injury status. We start with reception first and, it's with, and ends with ambulation. 
limb mobilization post surgical change to prevent uh, subclinical DVT. If DVT is the main problem here, the patient will be lying in the ICU or on the bed for the longer period of hours and then the longer days. Then uh, he may not move his limb. So there are high chances of DVT here and pressure sores, disease atrophy, stiffness, contraction. So you need to treat all those ones. So we have got some scoring systems here uh, for your uh, uh, undergraduate level you need to worry about Glasgow Coma Scale. So the Glasgow Coma Scale is based on the eye response, verbal response and motor response. Uh, we abbreviate it as EVM. Eye response is uh, scored from 1 to 4, verbal response from 1 to 5 and motor response from 1 to 6. There is no zero here. The least the normal person will be having 15 out of 15 uh, scoring and the least the patient can get is 3 by 3 uh, 3 out of 15 sorry it is not 0 out of 15 it is always 3 out of 15 the least the patient can get always remember this there is no zero here so this is for uh, head injury actually Glasgow coma scale and other uh, scales are uh, there about injury scale and injury severity score and new injury severity score these are all not, not of uh, not for undergraduate thing so you what you need to remember is uh, glasgow coma scale it, it is very very important and the scaling system when you will call uh, severe head injury when you will call moderate head injury and uh, when you will call minimal So the fundamental power of management is not only important to save a life but to ensure that the efforts help the victim to end up with good quality of life with no or minimal functional disability. This is the final message that you can get while treating while managing the power of patient. So that's it for this class. Thank you.